The leadership of any country, any country, wants to be seen as it wants to be seen. That is not a sin, but it's something to know and to remember. And it's something that makes covering the White House a curious job. That is why presidents like what is called a photo opportunity, which is nothing more than a lack of opportunity to do anything other than take a photograph. No questions, no answers. What follows is from NBC White House correspondent Andrea Mitchell. She doesn't hate Mr. Reagan. She isn't out to get him. She is, professionally, out to get the story. It's her job. At the White House, any White House, that's not very easy to do, especially when he has more experience with cameras than you do. I'm not looking for trouble. Don't aim to cause any. And I got business in town, important business. I came from an industry in which ham is the basic ingredient. <laughs> now, you know what a ham is in our business. This is an actor you don't have to egg on. Or a president. All politicians do silly things like this, but no one has done it as naturally as Ronald Reagan. Or as often. Mr. President, can you do a sandbag on the east side? We want you to do one more. Yeah, doing it the wrong direction. Yeah. That, that, if his handlers tell him to fill sandbags at a flood, he does. He's the public relations president, the master of the photo opportunity. Driving a tractor in Peoria beats trying to explain unemployment. Just Sometimes it backfires. This stop in Boston was supposed to appeal to working class voters until the president ruined his blue collar image by suggesting that the corporate income tax be repealed. Reporters did ask about that and the president's spokesman said, don't tell us how to stage the news and we won't tell you how to cover it. But still you begin to wonder, is there any there there? Or is there a life after the photo op? 17 inches. Do we have a president or an actor playing commander-in-chief? No one is better at delivering a set speech. With a teleprompter, he can explain arms control. But without a script, the stuff gets awfully complicated. I don't know, but what maybe you haven't gotten into the area that I'm going to turn over to the, <laughs> to the Secretary of Defense. Because the silos will be hard. Yes. How much does he know? Privately, his aides say, not very much. He's smart, they say, but lazy. When he does try to explain things, they try to cut him off. It might be well to point out that the increase in defense spending, we have more than cut in half the increase over the Or projected... find a way to take our eye uh, off the ball. And we are holding it to 7%. Not one of the finer moments in journalism. When the networks complained about being tricked into carrying a not very newsworthy event, one White House official grumbled, they want to run their game shows instead of our game shows. Stand by your bed. For an even lighter touch, the White House turns occasionally to entertainers. Show business meets show business. When all else fails, the show goes on the road. But next time, let him get some rest. That was only a warm-up for the greatest staged event of all time. The Gipper staring down the commies at the DMZ. It also gave him a chance to take a shot at the scene below. The North Korean outpost the GIs call Propaganda Village. Looks like a Hollywood back lot. <laughs> and isn't any more important. Unlike the White House back lot, as the man said, you know what ham is in our business. You will never see me hit another puck again. As well. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News at the White House.